because we're busy and actually you know technology is great however we do not think what's behind the technology many times because all you know, the data is collected but do we actually know where the data goes you, you can't really know what other agencies or what other companies they might share your data with like silly thing you know we've got on our phones I'm looking for planes to the plane tickets today because I was checking a plane ticket for someone from um, Netherlands was flying in tomorrow late and uh, and I said well you've got this flight and you know you can you, you can book that one I know you'll be late for like the whole conference but you at least you'll be in the evening you will still be able to say something in the evening at the conference at this whole event that we've got and then Sunday is so important we all really need to discuss how we're going forward with everything so um, uh, so I was checking the, the flights for him and while I'm checking it later on, the first thing that pops on my phone, are you looking to book a room? We've heard it so many times that uh, com companies, you know, it's convenience, but at the same time, uh, it is monitoring. And, you know, I don't want them to know everything about me. And it shouldn't be a shameful thing to say, why, why should you know everything about me? And then the people's response is always, well, have you got anything to hide? Well, I don't have anything to hide, but why should you be the one checking if I do? So we're going to pick up Matt. And uh, I love him to bits though. And he said, he's my, he's my wingman, by the way. So we've kind of, yeah, we've done quite a lot of stuff together. Yeah. How was it? That was good. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. 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 No mask. No mask. No. No. Paul and Denmark is having a small uh, some holiday now from the. For how long? I think they're gonna last all, all winter. Yeah. So they can. Uh, yeah. Because they, I think they want to put in all the digital stuff now, right? Yeah. But do you really think they're not gonna, they're not gonna do anything over winter? The more the more close they are to being ousted bigger the recession they will create. The poorer we get, the better it is. And you think that people are just going to stay enough is enough? I, I, I think they, uh, people are not going to listen to Corona anymore. Oh no, They're Corona's ready. finished. If they realize these people just made so much money on all of us, it's ridiculous. This is the thing that pisses me the most. It doesn't matter whatever you say, right? Yeah, yeah. If it's true, if that's not what the media is going with, yeah. you cannot break through you will be literally treated like an absolute villain. And then four years later, it will come as true. And then what? It's silence. Arturo, Italian. Arturo. Nie, Artura nazywałam ze względu na króla Artura, King Arthur. Oh, King Arthur. Jestem wow. król Arthur. Arthur. That's what exactly. he's got the name. Last one. Yeah. Jestem król Arthur. Okay. So Occasionally is not. Okay, one off. Because in America it will be 11 o'clock morning, while here it will be 5 in the evening. No, yeah, no, Siri, no, 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 no. please tell me. Yeah. Where is 11 o'clock? When it's... Oh, I don't think Siri would know that. This is, my, this is, this is how my mind works at midnight. I'm being a taxi driver. Sorry. Yeah. I'll be the voice of reason. Oh yes, and you say good night. Fuck home. Yes. Uh, yeah, I need to because I need to go and pick up somebody in the morning. Hey guys, please throw her out. Yeah, you guys throw her out. You fell asleep for three hours. Yeah, sir. Yeah, Matt, you know where you're sleeping. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I don't think our role as activists that are doing all these groundwork is to become uh, leaders in the way of presidents, prime ministers, whatever. No, I know people want leaders, but the problem is we very often don't know when to stop being a leader. And this is why we create dictatorships. They should have someone who will come out and say and lead for a second, but is able to have a step back when there's a crowd ready, because you can't stand in the front. And that's what the day issue that we got. I think the main job, at least for me, is to connect people together, like minded yeah. people. And, uh, yeah. Get some insights um, from them and to them. Yeah. And then keep them moving. Yes. They usually, it comes from themselves first. I mean, it's not like I'm giving them anything. They already had it in them. It's yeah. more like a plant, a kind of water. Mm. Yeah. But the plant is there, the seed is there. Yes, yes, you just give that little spark. And do you think people have understood that the aim is to actually get rid of anything that's alive? Well, see, you know, I mean, there's going to be hard times coming. It's a very interesting thing that a lot of um, activists are scared of speaking about AI. And when I was asking people to come, some said, well, I don't know anything about AI. And I said, well, that's fine. If you don't, that's your job. You're an activist. You need to actively teach yourself about stuff that is coming. If we talk about freedom, AI, it is something we have to start telling people. One, two, three. Uh, James, can you hear us? I can. Wonderful, yay! We're in the middle of an AI revolution whose size is really hard to grasp. Does the AI benefit everyone equally or just a few? Are we making tools to improve lives or weapons to destroy them? Everything that's currently electric will have intelligence added to it. And my point is we don't know fast forward 15, 20 years what will be unfolding. What, what is the result in 20 years, even let's say 10 years or 5 years of what's going on now? Technology actually made us talk less to our family, even the ones we live with. And so the problem with AI is there will be more of that. There will be more, more loneliness. Some kind of zombification of the human being. And there will be less real life. We will be facing a whole epidemic of people completely out of their minds. Because artificial intelligence um, has a way to get into our brains. And we all know that. So there's a huge warning for both our own health, mental health, as a presence for our kids. Computer life is a lot of promise of making things faster and bigger, but we're just going further away from ourselves. That's not what we're doing, basically. We're actually moving backwards. We're moving outside of the real world because what Metaverse is doing, they're building this whole parallel universe. I and mean, can you believe that people are buying buildings on, on those platforms as if it was a real building? People are just, some people, and I'm concerned again about the young people, because they cannot discern what's real or not real. But if people were more connected already to their own bodies, they would feel it. And it is proven that the IQ has been lowering. They gave the power to the cell phone. Because, you know, Google can answer everything. There is a little tiny class of 1% that are allowed to learn to think mm -hmm. for themselves, to study and find out what the real solution is in the, in the, in the, the super super uh, elite schools they learn trivium they, they learn grammar logic and rhetoric so the 99 percent of the population are being taught to obey orders because part of the beast, beast system is trying to make you feel inferior make you feel useless the technical industry has a lot of tools because they know everything about the human brain, not everything, but maybe more than we actually know of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So they have been using lots of techniques that make us, I would say victims, but unless we empower ourselves, then we're not victims anymore. Because we're using technology called uh, artificial neural networks, which roughly are modeled after the human brain, they rely on big data. The trouble with all that data is someone has to has to check it for bias and and uh, and racism. They, they do that and they use that program for giving people bond in jail in America. A case came up where all the data that was being used in the sentencing algorithm was 20 or 30 years old when 
when people of color, when minorities, were put in jail a lot more often and for longer periods than white people. And uh, the computer, the AI that they use, the system, has came up with the answer that, well, white people are less prone to commit crime, so we'll give more bond to, we'll let out the criminals who are white. And it's the same with CVs. When the AI program was scanning the CVs in America for a job, it's um, automatically rejected the Mexican names. This is happening right now. Amazon just killed an algorithm that for, for hiring people because it was bias against women. 30% of all jobs will be taken by AI and automation by 2030. Anything that's repetitive or routine, from factory work to driving cars and trucks, is going to be replaced. It's going to be automated. People stand to make a lot of money from that automation, but nobody really has a plan for retraining the people who are employed. I was browsing through the internet and I saw Elon Musk, of course, I was and the bus knocking. And he was on a meeting with a shake. So he was talking about creating this minimum wage income, right? And the sheikhs were saying, why we should pay to the people uh, who cannot, who do not work? Elon Musk said at that meeting, you know, I'm creating automa automated trucks. They will be ready in 18 months. That was over two years ago, probably COVID changed that. They will not be able to change the job. We have to provide for them. And for me, one of the things is the One Health. I think a lot of people realize that the WHO wants to have a One Health program. And of course it looks pretty and it looks like, oh, it's for the planet and it's One Health of Planet and One Health for animals and One Health for free for people. So while we know that this is going to happen, there's, there's a little bit more stuff to it. So for example, you know, you will not need a doctor. Hmm. Why would you need one? You can have an AI doctor. And these won't be your doctors who will take away your job, that's not how they're saying it. These will be your twins that will learn as you making decisions and then they will make better decisions sometimes and then they will be able to back feed, feed back to you as a doctor to make a decision so it sounds like oh you're going to get this wonderful help a computer program or whatever but in the reality that program will at one point be better than you and i don't really want to go to a machine and i don't want to scan my fingers and actually i don't even want them to have my medical data why should i mm -hmm. Why can't I have my own medical data? Maybe idea is for me to have my own medical data, you know, and I'll go to a doctor and I'll say, yeah, here you go, this is my medical data, but it's on the blockchain, whatever, and I'm taking it with me while I'm leave. But at the moment, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to uh, the health, NHS, for example, in UK, right? Or in Poland, it would be NFZ. And uh, I don't know who they're going to share it with. Technically, there is data protection. But have you ever seen anybody try to find out whether his data protection was breached? It takes two years, at least, for you to figure that out. In UK, you cannot, for example, prescribe a specific medication unless you tick specific boxes on the computer. Even you know that, the, let's say, that person requires that specific medication. But let's say they didn't have this specific scan. It was certainly probably not needed. But if you can't tick this box, that means you can't give that medication. And that doctor knows that this is exactly that medication that that person needs, but cannot prescribe it. So there's a lot of this bureaucracy that is created. But now if you have an AI doctor, it will not even know that this is the medication that it should be given. And also that AI doctor might be very good. I'm not saying the technology isn't because it speeds a process of with a lot of stuff. But at the same time, there's so many dangers to the stuff that is being put in place. And it's taking away the decision making process from the real experts, so to call it, uh, you know, the one who really uses their brain and thinks and cares for the other person. And we're losing a lot of doctors because they don't agree with what they're being told that they must say. Mm. The program has got an algorithm created by, for sure, Big Pharma, 
I'm sure the guys that want to sell us specific medication and drugs. I can also say that a lot of these organizations have got conflicts of interest, and they do. They have massive conflicts of interest. If an organization that says to you that she's going to be keeping you healthy and safe is making money on making on on keeping you safe, then that is just a conflict of interest. We all looking into the WHO like this. Um, organization that is almost a governmental one but it's not right it's not it's just an advising body technically it's supposed to give you advice and you may take it or you may refuse uh, but imagine anybody who would say oh well I don't agree with the WHO they'll be villainized and yet the WHO almost half of the funds that they got is from private corporations that there is war machines are designed like humanoid machines they can have uh, your movement, the major party movement of a human being, into the program. So this machine shoots in seven places where you, you possibly be. It shoots where you stand, it shoots where you could move or avoid it. These are machines that kill without a human in the loop. I have no doubt that they're out of the factory and on, on, on battlefields right now. Have you seen those little drones with a little explosive face recognition program? If they would like to eliminate us, it would be cheaper than sending a SWAT team, right? We in America use facial recognition software on our southern border with Mexico. When people are brought in, they're photographed and they're tracked. We use it in our airports all the time. I, I no longer need an ID to get on a plane. The computer looks at me and says, I am or I'm not James Barrett and just lets me on. They're putting, up, they're putting up surveillance cameras everywhere. I mean, this is something we would have thought would be unthinkable 30 years ago. Every single activist that arrived, that, that none of them had their passport checked. And even for UK. I swear, I've never flown to Poland without my passport being checked on the border. And in England, it's not per capita, per person. There are more, more cameras now in England than in, uh, than in China. But it doesn't matter who's, who's yeah. biggest, right? It's just no, big, yeah. right? AI is used for surveillance around the world. In China right now, the Uyghur ethnic minority, as you probably know, is, 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 has been put in a, a vast prison camp of about a million people. And they track Uyghurs across the country through facial recognition software. It's a tool for oppression in another way. I mean, for instance, in France, there has been some kind of a law, I think, that says that you, you're not, you shouldn't be prepping or buying some kind of material, which I think is totally insane. Because if we want to prep, we should be able to prep. There is no reason for that. No. Um, they're, they're even talking about this Visa MasterCard with a carbon print tracking. So it could mean that after some time, if you've been buying too much prepping stuff, you're labeled as a prepper and then you're probably someone who knows too much because why on earth would you prep? One day, for example, there would be a law that would say that you can only go as far as five kilometers and do shopping. So you would leave your five kilometers perimeter and tap your card because you're in to have a coffee and the machine would say, Mm -mm -mm. You're not in your parameter, we can't sell you this. There is no limit until we put a limit to it. There will be a step that we will take right now, because it's so quickly going, that will be too far and you can't go back. You can't go back. And to s when we stop, we need to figure out exactly what you've asked. Who would be the people that should be looking at doing it? In what way? Because the biggest danger of technology is men, because it's us who has the control of going further to use it for the good or for the bad. Is AI going to be in the next 10 years real AI? Or will it be AI that the people that we've currently got in power all the ones who are responsible for creating well, I the, think the algorithms for it? It's about who controls the tools. If we had an open source AI that was totally transparent, uh, maybe we'll be fine, but uh, we all know how, who is financing it and um, it's, it's probably going to be used for control as it is now. We can see what uh, Facebook and Twitter have done. They just blatantly, flagrantly just broke the constitution without repercussion. If we don't stop that, 
then uh, it does not look very good for the AI because that means that we will just have more indoctrination and more censorship, more Bolshevism, more technocracy. So again, how do we get from merely questionable applications in AI to AI that can overwhelm mankind? It's, it's through an idea called the intelligence explosion. The technology by our hands, the mankind, will kill man mankind. Computers will set the pace of intelligence growth, not us. And for the first time, we'll share the planet with something thousands or millions of times more intelligent than we are. If it wasn't friendly, it could do things like, it could hack and crash our self-driving cars. It could hack and crash our nuclear reactors, shut down our banking systems. Worst of all, it could hack and crash our electrical grid. And then our civilization would really cease to exist. Should we be afraid of that? Of that possibility that one person, through AI, can sort of influence the world the way it was never meant to be influenced? I would say absolutely. I'd, I'd say until computers get, get to be smarter than humans, we have a lot to fear from, from individuals. Nobody had read the 1.6 trillion words LAMDA was used, had, had been trained on. In that could have been a lot of racist propaganda. They could have had, you know, Hitler's Mein Kampf. They could have had the Protocols of Zion. They could have had all kinds of nonsense in there that would come out later in some applications. In the longer term, we have a lot to fear from, from, from AI. I don't see for the moment a way out, unless we don't have access to uh -huh. computers and cell phones anymore. It's too attractive. We all know we like sweets, yeah. we like fun things, and it is very attractive, so... It's so sweet, and the kids, for kids, it's brilliant. If you tell them they can pay just by swiping their hands, and that's the problem, they will love it. Humans are not grown up enough. We're still like five, and they gave us <laughs> a to play with. car key. <laughs> Let's just stop and say, we have enough, enough technology already. You can't stop that train. Uh, these companies are making too much money. What we can do? My idea was very utopic. To, uh, let's say, inspire people to use technology to create a new system for ourselves. But it's very hard without sufficient uh, human capacity and money resources to create something to compete with Microsoft, IBM, all big, big players. So now in this position where we are, it's, I don't know, on which level we should look for the solution. Yeah. And the short answer is regulated. Going back to the, the roots, the constitution, human rights, and have a, 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 as decentralized a society as possible with as little government as possible, as few technocrats as possible, give people as much power over their locally, local life as possible. People know best what is best for them, not some technocrat in the, in, the, in the big city. The dangers are more not in the technology itself, because I do appreciate that it helps us. I mean, we're here today because of it. But I'm more, more worried about whose hands we put these systems in, because we know from the last two years. We're tackling the, uh, the, the, the problem of power grabbers at the moment, who already are grabbing the power, and then while they've grabbed it already, uh, they're gonna, I think, create something very dangerous. Co myślisz, że jest możliwe, że będzie? Roboty ze władną ziemią. O, co będą takie roboty robić? Torturować ludzi. Będę oh, to torturować ludzi. Human life is very precious, right? It's very precious. There is some miracle behind us coming the way we appear to the world and you know the, the birth and everything it's precious and in a way i get that the people who are currently putting all these things that are putting they're saying yes we're saving lives but are you really you're not so if your tools of convincing me that what you're trying to do is saving the world are by using fear 
guilt tripping and making me feel like I'm horrible, then you're not saving the world. Your job is to educate me well enough so I understand what you're saying. And if I have a different opinion, then I should be able to speak and say that my opinion is different. But you, your job is to raise my awareness to the level that I understand why you're telling me that you are correct. But if you're not even willing to sit down and have a conversation, and this is what's always been a problem, we have not been in the media, we are not allowed to be in it, that's the pain. It doesn't matter how reasonable I sound. In the eyes of the world and the media, I'm not even allowed to say, look, this is who I am, this is what I do, and this is what I think. Let's have a debate. You think this, I think this. No, because straight away, there's this wall. We have to be back to the tablet. We went up in the and just waiting for the